This is a pretty, pretty crazy horn. Check out how small that bell is. But the coolest thing about this horn is what you're seeing right there. How long did this horn take to get made? Whew, I don't know, but stay tuned to this video and I'll talk a little bit more about this old military model. Hey everybody, how you doing? It's Trent Austin from Austin Custom Brass. I hope you're having a fantabulous day out there. Please take a moment, hit the subscribe button, wherever it might be, all around. Keep up to date with us. Um, we are so thankful you're, for your great support of the shop. So here's another horn for the collection. I had one of these a few years ago, maybe four or five years ago, um, and I sold it to Ryan Kaiser, but uh, th that one was in silver plate. This is an old military model from the 1930s. Um, one thing you'll, the first thing, it's the most obvious thing you see is this crazy bell that's completely hand hammered. And I'm gonna try to zoom in so hopefully it will hold its focus so you can see, yeah, look at that. How long did you think that took to make? Just crazy. Look at that amazing work. I'm gonna bring it over here towards the bell so you can see the logo as well. Look at that, old. Then it says military model and it has an eagle on it, I do believe, yeah. The cool thing about this horn is that the inside of this bell is flat. So you say, well, wait a second, this is hammered. So they had an extra step on this process to make this part of the bell flat. The result in this of this horn, and this is a four and one sixteenth inch bell. Now a normal Bach trumpet is four and seven eighths. Let me zoom back out here for a second. Uh, the normal Bach is four and seven eighths inch. This is four and one sixteenth of an inch. So it's much smaller. I have a DeCarbo here. I'm gonna do, a, oh, I'm gonna break my horn. I'm gonna do a video on that soon. Um, but look at that. This is the old, obviously, and this is the DeCarbo, which is like a five inch bell, but a massive, massive difference in the bell. So what's the end result? Well, it sounds, I think it sounds really great, this trumpet. The end result, of course, is absolute direction. Um, I played at the beginning on my ribbon mic, but I'm gonna play right now just on the room mic uh, with the mic levels turned down. It is c incredibly directional. I'll point over here, and then I'm gonna point a little closer to the mic, and you're gonna be like, Oof. I hope. I don't know if you heard that, but it's kind of a crazy, crazy difference in the sound. It's very, very directional. Um, it reminds me a lot of the Shilky Fattis model. Uh, I do have one of those for sale as well in the shop, uh, where the Fattis model is incredibly directional. Um, this is a really fun horn. You say, well, what it would be, what, you know, can you really do on this? Um, you can play everything on it. The bore size is, is very um, common. This is their LM bore, which is a little bit smaller than a 460 bore. And this horn has been restored. Just beautiful restoration. Whoever did it did an amazing job on it. Uh, I don't know who did it. I'm not the, obviously I'm not the original owner. Otherwise I'd be almost uh, 90 years old. Um, and one other thing that I'm pretty sure of this receiver is not original and you can see there's a little nick out of that it could have been the receiver that was on the horn when the person restored it but it is not original some other cool features on this horn all three valve slides one two and three are on this side of the valve courtois later called that through uh through 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 bore you see it in <coughs> a few other horns in the 30s like the con vocabells so this was a pretty common trend at the at the early 30s to have some horns like this. Bisher also did it on their True Tone models. So let me play a, a, a ballad on it. I'm gonna first use this mic, the talking mic right here, and then I'm gonna to go to the trumpet mic and see what you think. All this is completely raw.
Now I'm going to switch. I don't think there's a way to make it really dark. Uh, for instance, even with my FX mouthpiece, it's gonna sound pretty bright. I'll use the uh, trumpet mic. Actually, that kind of did sound a little brighter than I thought it would. I feel like I'm going to hit this horn, so I'm moving it. Um, so that was with the FX, that super deep hybrid mouthpiece. Now, the fun really begins when you put a commercial mouthpiece in. The first mouthpiece, that sleeved mouthpiece you see, is a 3C, just straight ACV 3C. So this is my TAZ, which is a, I don't really play, uh, actually I've been playing almost everything on my 3C lately, just trying to get back to basics. And uh, so this might, uh, compress on me a bit, but I'm going to try it either way. So here you go. This one will be on the trumpet mic. So overall, a crazy horn, a cool design, a beautifully, you know, directional sounding trumpet, and a, and a classic from the past. This one isn't for sale. This is in my collection. I actually replaced an uh, old super recording with this horn. Uh, so I'm very happy to have it. It will be in the shop for anybody to check out, and hopefully soon will be open pending uh, all of our vaccinations. In the meantime, please take a moment, hit that subscribe button, stay up to date with us. We have a whole bunch of new videos coming and we're so appreciative of your great support of the shop. Take care.